Hey everybody, it's Ben Strader here with EFI University. We're here in the engine shop and uh, we wanted to do a little experiment today to address an issue that uh, is, is questions that often come up in our engine blueprinting courses. So um, about a week or so ago on our Facebook page we had a contest for people to try and figure out what this guy here is and uh, got a lot of positive responses and people seemed interested and excited. So today we're going to talk about what this is. So this is a Skidmore Wilhelm uh, bolt force clamp force, if you will, measuring device. It's got a hole in the middle. You take and you put a bolt through there, and as you use your torque wrench to uh, fasten, to tighten the fastener, we get a reading in actual pounds of force of bolt tension. So bolt tension, if you would imagine, is if we take our bolt, imagine this was a connecting rod bolt, and we put it in the connecting rod and we start to tighten the fasteners as we pull the bolt apart, it's in tension. And so the idea would be that as the bolt is acting like a spring, we pull it apart and it wants to go back to its normal state. That's called that elasticity. Well, the idea here is that what we need to do is get enough stretch in the bolt so that it has clamping force sufficient to hold the pieces of the engine together. A connecting rod, for example, has to withstand the, the tension loads of the piston coming up to the top dead center and has to stop that piston from going out the top of the cylinder. So we go through an exercise where we'd measure the mass of those parts, the, you know, the connecting rod wrist pin, the piston, the rings, all those things that are slinging around in there. And then we can, based on the rod stroke ratio of the engine and the engine speed, calculate the amount of force being generated as that piston comes to a stop. So obviously the rod bolts would have to generate at least that much force to stop them and probably more. If the rod bolt cannot withstand that force, then obviously it stretches too far and then it won't go back to its original shape. So if we stretch this bolt too far, then we lose the clamp force that we actually need. So this Skidmore Wilhelm bolt force te tension gauge is how we use to determine that. So typically in engine building circles we measure uh, rod bolt stretch for example. So we would put this in here and we would um, go ahead and fasten it up to whatever torque we want on the torque wrench and we'd measure how much clamp force that gives us. But there's the rub. A torque wrench is a tool that we're all familiar with and we all use a lot, but the problem is what a torque wrench actually measures is friction, not actual clamping force. So we're going to demonstrate that today as we take this fastener and we put it in and test it. Okay, so to do this experiment I have a standard 3 8 inch diameter grade 8 hardened fastener like you'd get from your hardware store and a hardened grade 8 washer as well as a grade 8 nut. So I'm not going to put any lubricant on it at all. It's going to be dry to start with and we'll see what we get. And one of the things that you'll find when you start with a brand new fastener and nut is that from the first time you fasten it to the second, third, and fourth times, you'll, you'll tend to get a different reading. And the reason that's happening is as the two mating surfaces of the peaks and valleys of you, if you will, of the threads are meeting, initially there's rough spots. And so that lessens the amount of surface area and, and actually lowers the amount of friction that it takes to turn that fastener. So before the wrench actually gets to its 40 foot pounds that I've set it up at, uh, it, it'll click and we'll have move the bolt a long way. It'll have a ton of force. Then I'll simply loosen it. It won't change anything on the wrench. We'll tor tension it again and we'll most likely see that that, that t actual bolt clamping force has gone down and that's because now we have way more surface area. So uh, basically we're going to get to a lower amount of clamp force for the same amount of friction that the wrench measures. Let's give that a shot and see what happens. I'm just going to put this on here. And as we start to tighten it, you'll see that tension come up and at some point the wrench will click. There it goes. Right about 6,200 pounds of clamp force. So now I'm going to go ahead and loosen it back to zero so the nut is loose. And without changing the wrench at all, we'll just fasten it again and see what happens. If we do this a few times, now we're down to about 5,100 pounds. So I'm going to do it one more time here and see what we get. Fastener's loose, tighten this back up. Now we're down to about 4,000 pounds. So you'll see that clamp force is going to continue to drop until we've mated those surfaces properly and then it'll basically level out and we'll get about the same reading every time. So we're just going to keep doing this until we get a pretty accurate reading. There's 3,600 pounds. And again here, about 3,400, so now we should be getting close to where those surfaces are mating up nicely. 
and uh, we're getting about the same reading every time. There's 31. And about 31 again. And if I get a third one on 3100 here, then I'll go ahead and uh, stop there. Right at 3100. So each time we torque it, we're getting about 3100 pounds of clamping force for 40 foot pounds of torque on the wrench. Now the thing is, that's happening because there's no lubrication there. So what we wanted to do is let's take this fastener back out now that the surfaces have been mated properly. And I'm just gonna put some really, really high lubrication uh, fluid on here. This is, this is a mixture of engine oil and uh, molybdenum disulfide, which has a very slick kind of component to it. And that's gonna reduce the friction of the mating surfaces. So what we're gonna see is that for the same amount of torque on the fastener, the same amount of twisting force or friction that we're measuring, um, we should get a ton more clamp force. Let's just try it here. So I've got the Molly D here and the engine oil all over the bolt and nut. And we were previously leveled out about 3,100 pounds of force for uh, 40 foot pounds of torque. Bring my hands up here a little bit. Now I have not changed the wrench. I've just added the Molly and engine oil. So here we go. Now it's much slicker. So we get about 7,600 pounds of force. More than twice as much force for the same amount of torque on my wrench. What does that mean to you? Well, what it really means is that you don't have a good way when you're assembling your engine. Let's just take rod bolts for example to know what the difference is if I set all my bolts the same torque. Well, if all the bolts weren't the same clean and all the threads weren't mated the same way or you used more lubricant on one than on the other, you're gonna get a different amount of clamping force for every fastener in the engine. That's why when we deal with rod bolts specifically, we wanna know how much we've stretched the bolt to get this amount of force or whichever amount of force we calculated we wanted. So let's say that we had found out we wanted 5,000 pounds of clamp force for our bolts we'd find a torque setting of our wrench with the lubricant that we intend to use that gives us 5,000 pounds of force. We would then measure the length of the bolt while it's in tension. We'd take the bolt out, measure it while it's at rest, and the difference will be a couple thousandths of an inch. It's that amount of stretch that we'd want to use when we put the bolts into our engine and start torquing them down because that amount of stretch equals that amount of actual clamp force loads. Talk to you next time.